You really think you can spend our money better than we can? How dare you take our money that way? I've been yelling at Washington for years, but this is the first year, the first time that I felt I had company. The Tea Party was yelling too. And now a few Republicans are proposing what sound like serious cuts. With the debt growing, we need serious cuts. But when these few politicians talk about cuts, the big spenders act like they're being bludgeoned. The Republicans continued pushing a budget plan that calls for decimation, stagnation, and complacency. They want to have a fire sale. They want to sell off our country. A fire sale? They never want to sell anything. They ought to have a fire sale. Whole departments should be sold. But government just grows. And the mainstream media echoes this hysterical reaction to cuts. NPR and the Washington Post run headlines about deep spending cuts. Give me a break. Congress increased spending 60% this decade. Since when is cutting less than 2% of that a deep cut? The Republicans want to cut $61 billion, which may sound like a lot, except it's less than a third of what the U.S. will spend this year just on interest on the debt. And that's about an eighth of this year's budget deficit. And it's just a tiny percentage of this year's federal spending. A $61 billion cut doesn't seem very deep now. Harry Reid and the media keep calling the proposed cuts draconian. Really? Draconian? The word draconian comes from Draco. He was one of the first Greek political bosses. It was said he wrote laws in blood. Steal a head of cabbage, put him to death. The Harry Potter author was probably inspired by Draco when she named one of her evil characters Draco Malfoy. And I'm Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. Later, the kid went on to try to kill Harry Potter. So, attempted murderer, cruel executioner. Is draconian the right word to use when talking about a less than 2% budget cut? We need to cut 2%. We need to cut 50%. This hysteria over a less than 2% cut reminds me of the hysteria when Republicans got President Clinton to sign the welfare reform law. Today we are taking an historic chance to make welfare what it was meant to be, a second chance, not a way of life. Some people predicted trauma we haven't known since the cholera epidemics. Families will fracture. A million children could be forced into poverty. It didn't happen. Nearly two million children rose out of poverty. Welfare caseloads fell by half. Life got better, especially for poor people. Likewise, life will get better if we cut government. Heck, we don't even have to cut spending to balance the budget if we just slowed the growth of government to 2% a year. Assuming normal economic growth, we'd balance our budget by 2020. But the politicians won't even do that. They would call that draconian. Give me a break.